Mike Trout Motorsports lug nut sockets. If you guys haven't ordered a set of these yet, what are you even doing with your lives? What's up YouTube? Welcome back for another video. Today we are gonna get started doing winter upgrades on the Fossil here. Uh, usually in the past, I am really bad about procrastinating on my own stuff. And uh, last year it was warm out when I was doing winter upgrades. So to avoid that, I'm going to try to chip away at it uh, a little bit day by day, uh, work on it, you know, just uh, an hour a day or two hours a day, uh, every day that I possibly can. So that way it doesn't come springtime and oh, hey, I got a bunch of stuff to do. So the first thing we're going to start addressing uh, is the steering in this truck. If you guys have been following along since last winter, when I talked about all of that uh, front axle stuff and I talked about steering ratio, then you know that I have a quick steering ratio gearbox in my truck currently. And we know that that is not ideal uh, for trying to go straight down the drag strip. The quick ratio steering box gives you a uh, more nimble turning as far as it takes less wheel input to make a big move. And that's the opposite of what you want on a, a race only type truck. We want a, a lot of wheel input to make a little bit of actual turning input. So I'm going to be changing out the steering box on this truck. While I'm changing the steering box out on this truck, I'm actually gonna get rid of the power steering as well. Uh, this is something that I have thrown around a lot to try to figure out if I wanted to keep power steering or go to the manual steering. If you drove this truck with this power steering, you wouldn't even know how I was able to drive it. <laughs> it is terrible. Uh, driving it around the pits, a lot of it I think is the gearbox. Uh, the gearbox that's in it I thought was supposed to be a good one back when I bought it, but turns out uh, they weren't all what they were cracked up to be. So I think that probably 90% of that problem is the gearbox, uh, but I really want to go to the manual steering because that's what we had a lot of success with on JP's truck. And I want to get away from having one more fluid that could possibly leak. Uh, and it's also right in front of the left front tire. So if you did blow a power steering line off, could end in a disaster and we definitely don't want that. Uh, some of the other factors that are in this decision, uh, I have a uh, one of those quick draw power steering pumps uh, and I have seen several guys have some pretty catastrophic issues with those. Uh, apparently the, the gear that they make for those, uh, they come from China and they're not heat treated properly and they can actually bust that gear off and then when it does that it pretty much wipes out the cam gear metal all through the engine man i would be really upset if that happened so uh, i'm gonna get away from that and i've got some parts to convert this thing over to manual so the big reason is the steering ratio the manual is going to be uh, a little harder to drive around the pits than power steering, uh, but it's gonna be better driving down track. The other thing with manual steering uh, is when we run this thing in the summertime, with it being a filled block, uh, I do push it around the big tracks with the golf cart, and the power steering is absolutely miserable to try to, to navigate through the pits when the engine's off. I mean, it's almost impossible. So the manual steering will be a lot better for that. There's just a lot more pros than cons going this manual steering route. And then of course, uh, the big factor that I always consider on anything racing wise is weight. Uh, this is going to definitely be a lighter option. I'm actually gonna be using an aluminum steering box, which I'll show you guys here in just a second. Uh, and with being able to get away from the power steering pump, power steering lines, the fluids, uh, by the time we're all said and done, I'm guessing that this is gonna be around 25 to 30 pounds weight savings. I know that sounds extreme, but the power steering pumps have weight. The gearboxes are cast iron on these. They're pretty heavy. This gearbox I have here is pretty light. So we'll see. We're gonna weigh everything before and after, but that's today's project. Well, this week's project is going to take me a few days to do this. This isn't going to be a bolt-on deal. It's going to be where we're going to have to fabricate some mounts. We're going to have to do a little bit of work. But uh, it's going to make this thing uh, overall better in the long run. So let me show you guys exactly what I got for this thing. 
All right, so first thing here is our new aluminum manual steering box. Now, uh, if you're a truck guy, this is probably pretty crazy looking to you. Uh, it doesn't look like anything that would be commonly found on a truck, and that's because it's not. Uh, this is actually an e-body Mopar steering box, so that would be like a Challenger or a Cuda. And this thing has a 24 to 1 steering ratio. So you have to make a lot of turns of the wheel uh, to go from lock to lock on this. The steering ratio that I had in this truck before, I thought it was like 13.6 to 1, uh, but there's some conflicting information online about that. So I believe it's actually 16 to 1, and I believe that the factory steering ratio is 20 to 1. So this will actually be slower than the factory first gen steering ratio. And because it's manual, it'll be a lot tighter. So it will feel a lot more precise as the driver input going down the track. This, um, oh, what do you call these things? The, it's not a, yeah, it's a pitman arm. The pitman arm for this, uh, I got this stuff a while ago, so I don't remember where I got this from. Uh, but basically this is a nothing special pitman arm. Uh, if it all works out, I might try to buy a billet one of these if I can find one. Uh, if not, this one will work okay. The, this is a six inch from center to center. And so if I want to make some changes in the steering ratio after I have this done, if I want to speed it up a little bit because maybe it's a hair too slow, I can actually shorten this. I can put a shorter one on it and that will speed up the steering ratio. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna wanna slow it down anymore, but if I wanted to, I could move this out a little bit longer, assuming that I have the room in the truck to do so. So as you can see here with this being a steering gearbox, not from a truck application, I'm gonna have to make some bracketry to bolt this up. And then I've already got the correct steering coupler for my steering shaft so i have all the parts here to pretty much do this project so that's the steering box now let me show you uh, what's replacing the power steering pump so this cool looking piece of billet here uh, is from newperformanceauto.com uh, that's steve burton out of virginia i believe it is and this is basically just a bolt-on uh, kind of like a block off plate but still utilizes uh, factory Cummins gear with the hex cut into it for my uh, fuel pump drive. So since I'm driving the fuel pump off of the power steering pump currently, I still needed to have a gear there so I could drive that, uh, which is why I couldn't just do a simple block off plate. And New Performance Auto, I believe it's New Performance Automotive technically, uh, they make this nice little piece here that bolts right in place and will still allow me to use the a Cummins OEM gear to drive my fuel pump. So that will get me away from any of the worries that I had uh, with that Chinese gear and still allow me to run the fuel pump the same without changing anything at all. All right, so the first thing I wanna do before we start working on this thing is I wanna see what these parts that we're gonna put on it weighs uh, so that way I can weigh everything that goes on, weigh everything that comes off, and get an accurate uh, reading of how much weight we really are saving. So before we start, play a little game here. How much do you guys think the gearbox with what you see on it with the pitman arm on it, how much does that weigh? Uh, I'm right-handed, I'm holding it up with my left hand. I am going to guess that this weighs 11 pounds. Let's see. Okay, I was a little off. It weighs 15 pounds. Make sure you guys can see that. So, steering box with the pitman arm and the correct coupler, 15 pounds. Now, let's see what the new fuel pump drive weighs. Well, I guess we should play the game on this too. What do you guys think this thing weighs? I'm saying, Obviously, I guessed a little low last time. I'm gonna say seven pounds on this. Well, I guessed low on the first one and high on the second one, and so comes up to 20 pounds. So that is basically going to be the entire steering setup aside from 
the bracket tree that will need to be built to put that on there. So I'm figuring about 25 pounds for this setup. So it'll be really curious to see how much the old setup weighs. So now that we know what that weighs, we're gonna start working on this thing, getting the old stuff out of there. So before I go ripping into this thing and tearing everything apart, I figured I'd show you guys what the old setup looked like here. So uh, you could tell me if the new setup looks cleaner or if this looked cleaner. But basically, factory steering box. Uh, I've always hated that power steering line and I wanted to remake that, but uh, one of those things never got around to it. Just factory power steering pressure and return line. So you can see in the proximity of where that is to the tire that if I ever had a problem with that, uh, that could end badly. And then that is the quick draw power steering pump that I was referring to. So this is kind of the, the mess that we'll be able to get rid of here. So now I'll start tearing into this thing and get to weigh in it all. All right, so I saved you guys from a uh, time lapse on that, which would have been brutally painful because I had to run up to the parts store and get a ball joint spreader uh, and all that good stuff. But we got it out and this is what it looks like now. So much more room for activities. Small technical glitch there, camera decided that it didn't want to play anymore. So uh, you've seen, I got the old stuff off. Let me show you the pile of the old parts here. So, this is everything uh, that was on this thing before with some additional bracing. As you can see there, uh, when I originally built this, I had heard all the stories about the first gens cracking the steering box plates and the frames, and I kind of overbuilt all that stuff because I was worried about it. Uh, knowing what I know now, I don't really think any of that's necessary for a race truck. I think that's mainly guys that are running like 35s and 37s having issues with that kind of stuff. So uh, some of this stuff's a little bit overbuilt because of that. But it doesn't matter because all that's going away now. So what do you guys think all this here weighs? Uh, we're going to throw it on the scale next and see. A little game here, see what we think it weighs. Uh, the last stuff was 20 pounds, and I'm hoping to be able to save 25 to 30 pounds. So I would really like to see this stuff weigh in around 50 to 55 pounds. That would make me really happy. So let's find out. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see what it weighs. 57 pounds. So that is a... 36 pound weight savings. Now, uh, there's about a pound worth of fluid that I drained out of this thing. So call it uh, 58 pounds. Uh, so that's 38 pound difference. And then I'm gonna have to put another probably three pounds if I do a really good job back into the, uh, the mounts to actually mount the new one. So we should definitely be uh, 30 pounds lighter for sure, possibly as much as 35 pounds lighter. So super, super excited to take 35 pounds off of uh, the very front of the truck here. Anytime I can take weight off of the front, it's always a win. All right, so I've got the new steering box mocked up in here. Once again, saved you guys from the time lapse. That was a lot of uh, awkwardness trying to hold that thing up in there and uh, make a jig or something for it to hold it up in there. But we got it in there and this is what it looks like. So this is about roughly uh, how it'll be. It won't be quite at that angle. I'm gonna have it uh, in line with the angle of the steering shaft. There's a couple things that are gonna have to change for sure. The pitman arm, I'm actually going to measure uh, since, like I said, this is from an e-body Mopar. I don't really want to change the steering ratio yet uh, as far as I don't want to make it any worse than what it is. So I'm going to measure from uh, an e-body Mopar, uh, which I can measure off of my dad's race car, and figure out exactly from center to center what the pitman arm is from the factory on those. Uh, regardless, either way, I'm going to have to move the drag link uh, more inward towards that. Uh, I just don't like the angle that it's at. Obviously, this is all very roughly mocked up. So this is uh, just similar to how it's going to look, but no final angles on anything. Uh, but essentially, I want this to be at a better uh, straightness with the frame rail than what it is now. I'm probably also going to 
go ahead and uh, redo the drag link out of a piece of chromoly tubing like what my tie rod bar is here. I think I can save some weight doing that and then have heim joints at both ends. Uh, I think it'll look better and save weight. So uh, that's kind of uh, what's going to have to happen there. But the next thing that I'm going to be doing is mounting the steering box actually to the frame rail. And I'll take you up top and show you that so that way it's a little bit easier to understand. This is a precision instrument that I'm using here. So don't laugh at my uh, little mock-up there. But basically, actually, let me take you down here. So essentially, it'll be bolted, like I said, pretty close to how that is there. Um, I'll actually go through when I'm making the brackets and I'll explain uh, the whys I'm gonna mount everything, but it's gonna be really simple. Just a little bracket to the top bolt hole off of the frame rail, and then uh, another one off the bottom to kind of triangulate it on this side. And then if you see, I'll take you back under here again. There's a tab on the bottom of this or the side of this gearbox. Uh, I'm probably gonna do something to triangulate this over to the frame rail here. So that'll probably require a little bit of a bend or something. I don't know. I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time just uh, looking at this thing to figure it out. But that is the general idea of our manual steering box. And I think I can accomplish those brackets that we're talking about uh, for around three pounds or so. So I'm not going to uh, prolong this video too much longer than this. Uh, I'm going to kind of break it up into a two part deal, show you guys the old setup, show you guys the reason why, the weight, all that good stuff. And then on the next video, we'll do some uh, fab work, get this thing mounted on here, and then we'll actually uh, back it out of the garage and take it for a little uh, drive around the house here and see what I think of the manual steering. So I'm going to end this one here, guys. Appreciate you watching. If you got any, uh, tips or uh, info you want to give me or if you have any questions about what I'm doing if you think I'm crazy uh, drop a comment below let me know and other than that appreciate it and we'll see you next time